three guys who combined to play 15 seasons in the National Football League trenches. Well, two guys. And Mackey, who didn't do s***. This is the O-Line Committee. I'm a professional podcast producer. There we go. There we Just go. talking to myself. Talking to myself while the credits roll. Uh, welcome in part two of our week seven deep dive here, National Football League. There's a and, lot. And uh, if you missed part one, a lot of juicy stuff. But this will take the shape of dumb football questions. I'm, I'm not gonna, no time wasted. I'm just going to ask you the first dumb football question for me. We'll get to some from the audience here, boys. Jeremiah Searles, Alex Boone, Phil Mackey. Click that like button and the subscribe button on the online committee YouTube channel. Has Deshaun Watson played his last game for the Browns and or in the NFL? Yes. Ooh, no. I do think so. I do. No. In Absolutely. both or in one or the other? Both. Absolutely both. You think I, he's I, not playing in the NFL again? Yeah, I don't. I mean, I think you're number one. You got injured before you got to Cleveland. You got injured while you were in Cleveland. Now, all of a sudden, you're injured again. I think it's just too much. And then not only that, but you're talking about the background. I mean, dude, I just got back from Cleveland for my grandma's funeral. And shout out to my family that was stellar during it and jay for being with me during that time fucking love you dude um but you talk about what they i mean dude the entire before sunday's game was what do we do what do we do as a city what do we do as a team like everybody dude i'm not even kidding you the whole city was pissed like everybody's pissed man it's just it's not who they are as clevelanders they're blue collar people that work their ass off they like to drink a lot of bud light and start a lot of fights but that's who they are it's what we do it's fun for us at the same time the minute this came on the scene they were like we're not about this we don't support this and we don't promote this type of shit like this attitude is not at all what cleveland would be get behind rally around and i mean i understand the players when they're like hey listen one of our dudes just got hurt you don't need to cheer you don't need yeah, to do that, that that's that was super okay. fucking classless like i'm gonna be honest with you i you we played this game and i played it at an extremely intense level like mentality in my own head i never once went out there maliciously like i'm gonna hurt this dude because you knew that everybody had a family or they had somebody they had to go home to or they were someone's kid and you didn't want someone to do that to you or their teammate and so when you see the fans cheering for that, you're like, that's just kind of despicable. And I mean, obviously, I'm from Cleveland. I've I was there when they were throwing the beer bottles and shit on the field years and years ago. This isn't the first time. I mean, the, the river caught on fire. It's just what we do. But <laughs> there was, I mean, there was that whole thing. I know, right? But to cheer for something like that is super fucking tasteless. And for that, I'm embarrassed. And that should not have happened. Like, I'm not I'm not saying anything other than the fact that this is just another injury. And it's an Achilles. It's a big injury. Like, we all saw the video. Obviously, it was very, very clear what happened. And you talk about, can you come back from that? And then not only that, but mentally, what he's probably going through right now to hear everyone cheering for him when he ran off the field. Like, dude, that would fuck me up. Well, cart it off the field. Yeah, I mean, dude, <laughs> tell, tell me that wouldn't mess with you in your mind. Like, that, you saw him crying. And I'm sure that's exactly why. And I'm not saying anything other than the fact that that would mess you up mentally. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think he's already in a tough headspace. He's not playing well. He wasn't playing well. So I think, yes, this is the last time we'll see him in a Browns uniform. I think that someone will give him another chance to come be a backup in the NFL and try and work his way back into being what he is because there's never enough quarterbacks in the NFL. There's never enough guys that have a ton of experience, and everyone's going to think that that guy that was in Houston is still in there somewhere. So I don't think that he's out of the NFL I don't think he plays for the Browns again. I'll play this against you then. I'll use your own words against you and don't be mad at me. When you become a bigger distraction than you are a benefit to my team, then I have to let you go. And right I now, agree. And that's you're, why I think you're, you're always going to be a distraction. He'll come in as a backup. He'll you, that's even worse. I'm not answering questions about a fucking backup. I'm barely answering questions about the starter. Who? The backup? I don't even know who the fucking backup is, dude. Go away from me. Like That's what I'm saying. You cannot have this come in if it's not looking 100%. And then two... Do you know how many people in that city are going to be like, what the fuck did we just do? We signed this dude as a backup after all these shitty years. Yeah, dude, when, when he was in Houston and before all these allegations and all this shit came out, my dude was on fire. And Houston was another one. They kind of reminded me, and if you listen to part one, of like kind of like that Detroit. They play the season super, super tough, and the minute they get in the playoffs, they'd be like, what the fuck is this? Like, oh, God, what's, what's going on? Like They just could never get over that hump. But at the same time, now you're dealing with all these accusations. You've had some really, really shitty play. And, Jay, you know we say this all the time. The only thing worse than no film is bad film. Because the minute you put bad film out there, there is no team that can go, I, I can unsee that. You just can't. <laughs> you're always worried it's going to be 
out there and you're like, what if today's the day that he puts out that shitty film again? Like, what if it's against, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's yeah. just one of the things that goes through their mindset. So I think that this has just been a really shitty trifecta for what he's been through. But at the same time, it's probably going to be the last time we'll ever see him in a uniform. Do they well, go Jamison Winston or Dorian Thompson Robson? Dude, you well, go Jamison all the way and you go, hey, boys, <laughs> I hope you're ready to do punk coverage more than you think. Because I'll tell you what, you want to see a 50 50 ball. This dude's going to fucking show you one. You better get your mind right to run. Dude, I'm sorry. I love him. Did you see his? Uh, and I know He's he was amazing. talking about something really He's bad. He's amazing. But did you see his interview after the game? I'm sorry. I love him. I love him. I want his autograph. I want his jersey. I want to meet him. I want to bring him on the show. I want to spend the day with him and just be like, let's go get ice cream and talk. I'm not even kidding you. He was wearing yellow glasses, and I could not take him fucking serious. I was like, is he going hunting after this? Dude, my favorite is- video of him is when he's dancing on the crutch in 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 the Saints locker room after he like blew his knee out and like yeah. the, the, everything he's just going nuts. Wasn't there smoke and shit in the video that <laughs> yes, they were going nuts? Dude, yeah, I remember that video. He's incredible. I want to see him. him. I want to see him back being a guy in the hey, And that's what I feel like Cleveland could rally around a guy like that. Like they're going to be like every time they see him throw a ball once in a while they're going to be like, "Oh, that's not good. That's not good." But <laughs> But I'll tell you what, the ones that you do catch are going to be epic because he is thinking he's gonna 70 yards. Oh, yeah, he's There's gone. not a more confident quarterback in the NFL than Jameis Winston. Whether he's right or wrong, he is yeah. confident. Well, maybe Nick Mullins, but it's close. Nick Mullins you has dare talk uh, shit about Nick Mullins. <laughs> Dude, Nick Mullins is my favorite. By the way, for people wondering, there's been some reports about how does the injury to Deshaun Watson impact his ridiculous cap hits. So he his cap hits the next two years – are like 72 and 75 million or something. So if the it sounds like the Browns took an insurance policy out on the contract. So depending on what insurance policy they took out, that could create some offset stuff in the cap so they could recoup some cap money back. But okay. it's not, not enough to you make a what? difference though. I'm sorry, I can't move on from yeah. this because I am from Cleveland and this question got really heavily debated and I ended up talking to a few people that were weirdly involved in some wild things, but here's my question, who falls on the sword here? And hear me out. Is it the GM? Is it Stefanski? Or is it the owner? It's the GM. Well, the it's GM's the gonna GM. get fired. The right? GM's gonna the GM's gonna one that's gonna have to get I don't fired. think Eric Berry had anything to do with that. I don't even think Kevin did. Well, the, it was owner driven, right? Clearly, it was, that's make my whole point. And, like, but at, at the end of the day, who the owner's not gonna fire himself. He'll fire someone else. He should. He look is, at look at the say, Jets, look at the dude, Panthers. It's what it, he who holds the pen last <laughs> makes the decision. And even at times, it drives and, me nuts, guys. And even it if the owner's like, you know nuts. what? I was wrong, but it's not my fault. It's their fault. They didn't make it work. It's, they didn't make it work. In if fact, it, they, I wasn't even wrong. Yeah, they didn't I wasn't make even it work. wrong. They didn't do it. Fire them, start over. It's That's what's going to happen, <laughs> It's going to drive me nuts. And, yeah. dude, it's, it's gonna just going to be the same old cycle in Cleveland. Just a new coach, new new team, new You know coach, who's the happiest team. person on earth right now? Who? Amari Cooper. Oh, he got out at the right time, dude, and he got and to he went Buffalo. To the Bills God, and I'm Josh so Allen, excited. And Josh oh. Allen was like, "Okay, we'll just keep throwing it to Amari Cooper." Did you see his touchdown? By the way, yeah. did you? He lines up in the slot. So he lines and he's up asking the, the rookie to his left, "What am I doing?" Josh <laughs> comes up and goes, "Hey, kill, 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 kill." He turns to Keon Coleman, gives the double palms. I don't know what we're doing, and Keon just goes, "Run that way, right?" Like, go cook the safety, and he goes, "Yeah." Got it. Cool. Yep. Cooks the safety and Josh just throws him a <laughs> dart. Like no one's happier than Amari Cooper going, I no. get to play with Josh Allen. Josh Allen, let's go. They would, like he's gonna be incredible for them. Devontae yeah. Adams probably wishes he was traded to the to the Bills instead of the Jets, but um Dude, he's living with Aaron Rodgers. It's dude, weird. That, yeah, it's that's, kind of weird. They we ride to talked, work together. We already talked about that circus over there. We're but, not. I can't I go mean, back to it. No, no, I can't okay, move Shoot on okay. in the face. Next no, dumb I, football question. Go ahead. And there's there's a couple tentacles off this game. I know they lost, but the Patriots are in the headlines here. Um, for one, because Gerard Mayo called them soft, soft, which is hilarious. So I guess all right, two part two part question out the Patriots. Yeah, Don't question. Soft. One, dis- despite them being soft, can Drake May play a little bit? Yes. Because yes. he's looked pretty good. And, he sure and then, did. As, as guys who've been on a team where the coach called them soft around week six, what is that like when the coach calls you soft? Not good. Not good. <laughs> and I don't, I mean, I'm just going to be honest, especially when you poke your own eye and you have to sit up in the box for it. Like, my God. It's one of those things where when it came out, I remember Tony was pissed, not fucking happy. And he was livid. And I feel like kind of it overflowed on us a little bit, and we kind of overflowed on him, and we were kind of like, we just can't ha- handle this right now. And 
Dude, when you get called soft in the media and you've been getting your ass kicked and you've been trying to hang on as long as you can, because you know everybody out there is giving the best they got. Nobody out there is like, I'm like, oh, 50%. Like, yeah. it's just not like that. I swear. You you are quick to recognize the guy not giving 100%, and you're like, hey, dickhead, why don't you go sit down? Like, everybody's doing what they can, and then your coach calls you fucking soft. But the problem is you can't ever rebuttal. Like, you can't be like, no, nah, he's just a moron and doesn't know what he's fucking doing unless you're – stupid like me i i just it's weird to think that that one word carries so much weight but that's the one thing as a professional football player that like is a hot button you call oh, me absolutely. soft like you call me an idiot call me an asshole call me anything else but to call me soft is immediate fighting words immediate fighting words because yep. you can't play in the nfl if you're soft you can't and i've done it i'm in the nfl i've battled through everything i am elite of the 001 percenters i am not soft and i don't care who says like that is and then to come out and have bill belichick rebuttal his statement and say i know those players the patriots aren't soft like to over a dad came in from the top rope top and said mayo rope. i know i hand i got fired but i know those players and they are not soft like when Belichick's coming out and saying that, it's it, that's gonna be a that's gonna be a, a season long issue now when you're calling players soft. You cannot do that. He played too. He knows better. Yeah. He knows better. There's better ways to motivate your football team than to call a bunch of grown ass men that are fighting their asses off soft. It feels kind of desperate. It's you like a it's like a oh, last it's, card dude, it's you would play. Desperate. Right? It is beyond because if this goes sideways anymore, you're you're cooked. The team will never believe in you. Like that's kind of what happened the year it happened here. He called us soft and things never got better. And it was like, this is just never good. This, this relationship can never mend. Because and many that's a, people. That's a bridge seen, burner, dude. Many you call people me soft. That's something I don't know if I can forgive you for. Because and that's, that's the whole that's point is, how do deep, I want to go out and play for cut. you? Why would I want to go out and continue playing for you if you think I'm soft and you know I'm giving everything I got? Like, you know this is what it is. And at times we are doing, yeah, we have bad fuck-ups. We're giving up sacks. We're, we're in it, dude. We got a young quarterback. We got a shaky O-line. We got no playmakers around him. What did you fucking think was going to happen? That's my biggest thing, especially because almost kind of immature-ish to come out and be like, eh, they're soft. That's such a bold fucking it's a statement. Cop-out. Dude, it's it is. Out. It's it's a. I don't know what to say other than hey, we're going through it. Like I don't know why he can't just Belichick his way through this. Hey, dumbass, we're going through it. All right, we got a rookie quarterback back here. Our old line's getting shaky. We're losing guys left and right. We got nobody out there to make plays for us. I mean, what do you fucking think's gonna happen? Bad things, but we're trying to stay ourselves in this. Instead, he's like, I'm my soft. It's like, fuck you, dude. You're I mean, the, soft. the Mayo the Mayo hire has been kind of a disaster from the start. I mean, you talk about they hire, they get Drake May, and then they go to Jacoby Brissett, and then the the issue with Judon, right? Like, there's just been a lot of issues that's come up with Mayo, and I expected as a former player to not hear something like that come out of his mouth. A recent former player, too. It's not like you're a curmudgeon who's that played for Belichick. Like, you would expect that he would know not to. Do do you think Bill Belichick would ever call his players soft? No. Not that's to what I'm the saying. maybe maybe behind closed doors, but right? never to behind the media. closed doors. Never. Like, and that's one thing. If you come out and be like, "Hey, you played really soft this week," behind closed doors, that's I'm different. Gonna, I'm going to take that as that's a personal different. slight, and I'm going to come out and be like, "All right, I'll show you soft, motherfucker." But you come out to the media and the public to say that. That's when you're like, you don't have my back. That and that's the biggest issue is if you think your head coach or your position coach or whoever doesn't have your back, you, you it's. It's not congruent to winning football games in the NFL. It's also kind of a self-owned because you're the one as the coach that's creating and building the culture the that right. you are stops. calling right. soft. You. The buck right. stops with you. You wear Absolutely. HBC, head, ball, coach, across the front. So If, if we're you, soft, if it's we're your soft, fault. Your fault. No, and not only that, but Jay's right. There's been times where, and I'll be honest, behind closed doors, some nasty things have been said. It's different when it's a family meeting. It's different when it's just us. I don't give a fuck what you say in front of everybody because we're all going to see it, right? We're all going to watch the tape. We're all going to be viewing. We all know, and this is for everybody to understand, we all make mistakes out there. We all fuck up. Nobody goes into the meeting and goes, I graded out 100%. I have never seen somebody grade out 100%. Never. I don't care who it is. Never. And that's why when you go into a closed door meetings, you're like, you can tell me whatever you want. I might disagree with you at some point and we'll have a conversation later. Like, Hey, I don't think this is right. Or I don't think you're right. But at some point, most of the time they're not lying. They're just being honest. They're like, Hey, listen, this is fucking soft. We got to be better on our power game. And you're like, 
I forgot about that run through. Fuck. Like, yeah, I got it. Right. But the minute you go outside that family dinner and you tell all our aunts and uncles and everybody, oh, I got a soft family over here. You steer that narrative towards that. Now, all of a sudden, everyone's like, are they soft? Are they are, now everyone's looking for it the following weeks? What's going to happen? And, and as a team, you're like, why did you tell them that? Why would you say that? Even if you thought it, why would you say Like, that was my first response when we heard it here. I was like, why would you even say that? Like, that's just such a nasty well, thing to say. there's no positive that comes from it. Nothing. Right? It, you always want to think, like, hey, things that I say to the media, like, if I'm going to try and light a fire under my team's ass, what's the positive way that this can go? There's no positive route to that comment. It's only negative. It's negative from the media. It's negative from inside the, work, the building. It's negative all around. That's the kind of mistakes that that's a rookie head coach. That's an SFR fine, right? Stupid effing rookie. Stupid right? fucking him. rookie. Find him. Get his ass. Oh, pro- you know what? Get him for sensitive because I guarantee you he'd have a stupid fucking response to it. Defensive dumbass. Go ahead. <laughs> um, let's go to the audience questions here because there is one that involves Belichick that I think could be interesting. Keep sending your dumb football questions through to the YouTube comment section here, Online Committee YouTube channel. This is from Good Time Mark. Mm. Why don't like we ever see a new head coach brought in during, like, an outside hire during the season? We did. For example, we all know Dallas is going to hire Bill Belichick in January. Why not just make the move now? No. You could keep the coordinators in place and uh, just bring him in early to set the culture. Dude, the Colts just hired what's his name Saturday, out of nowhere. Did we, were we not paying it worked, attention? It worked no, really well. No, too. He's, well saying, Booney, Booney, he's saying, like, why not just be like, hey, hire this guy for next year already. Right? Like, say, hey, let's fire McCarthy and hire Belichick right I, now. I know. I'm saying coach. they did. With that was Saturday. Remember? No, they fired Not Frank. an interim. Not an interim. We're saying that, like, that's the guy. You sign him to a multi-year I know. deal. I, I, I think the they wanted the him to be the guy forever. And then <laughs> no, all of a sudden, five games in, and it was like. <laughs> no, stop it. And I'll, they realized they realized after the second half of the Vikings Colts game, uh, dude, right, he can't I, hold a thirty three nothing. I don't even think Saturday was working for the Colts when they hired him, did they? Was working did he? ESPN. That's my whole point. Was. Not only did they no, go outside, they went to a guy that had zero experience, but they thought because oh, this guy was Peyton Manning center, he's got to fucking know it all, dude. We have stated on this show and on several shows. You need so much work experience to be the HBC. You need so many fucking years, so many hours, so many days, so many minutes sitting dealing with our shit before you can stand on that mountain and go, I'm the motherfucking dog. Because you don't Even understand. as Bill Belichick? No, listen, because here's what happens. The minute you become HBC, and this is just being the truth, you're going to have a guy like me in the audience, and I'm going to go, the minute you fuck up, I'm going to let you know about it. What? Why? Because I'm getting paid money to fucking be here and destroy my body. You're getting paid to sit there and fucking tell me to destroy my body. But you better be tough as shit if you want me to be tough as shit. Or you better be sly as a fox if you want me to be. Like, all these things show up. And the minute, and think about it, you got, what, how many guys on the roster now? 75 during the season? Mm, Around there, yeah. You got 75 guys every single day going, is this guy really who he says he is? I, week eight, is he going to show up and be this fucking charismatic or is he going to act like a pussy? What's but don't do? you feel that way about the interim too? Like what's the difference between no, that guy, Belichick that guy coming in or Jeff Ulbrich, you know? No, because the interim, the interim is always, especially when they just promote, I feel like the interim is always the guy you rally behind because you're like, right. hey, we want to just help like you. the Jets did. And just, you, you know, he had no say in this, and you're like, hey, yeah. he, maybe he's like, I'm not ready for this. You're like, hey, I'm going to fucking figure it out. My whole point was the minute you hired Jeff Saturday, who had nothing to do with your organization. <laughs> you have such a th- bad time. No, I'm not. Saturday. That was the question. That's why you don't do it. You, you haven't been here, dude. Yeah. You're telling me you want, even if it was Bill Belichick, dude, you haven't been here with us. You just get to show up and run the show. Like, what the fuck? Th- that is the most unprofessional thing I've ever seen. That's why they normally just hire the OC or the DC or the special teams coach because they're like, this guy's been in here all year. The guys can trust him. They know that if something goes wrong, he's going to try and do everything he can to get him out of it. It's not like, oh, hey, by the way, I know nobody knows this guy, but he's in charge of all of you now. And not only that, but he's in charge of everything. <laughs> by the way, nobody knows this guy. What do you mean I don't fucking know this guy? What what, what the fuck is this? Like that would I would I would be like, what kind of Pop Warner bullshit are we doing? Jimmy's dad quit, so now Billy's dad. Be- <laughs> Becomes the head coach. <laughs> do you, what do the you hell? Think, okay, let me zoom out from just like middle of the you season. You do that. <laughs> Beyond for like next year, let's say. Okay. Is there a team that you think should hire Bill Belichick, or do you think he should just 
I, I think is he, Bill is he go. too old? I think Bill too, should go away. Yeah. I love I Bill to death. Bill. You're I don't too think old, Bill. Yeah. We all know I don't, that. I, uh, I, this is a new wave of generation, and we deal with it with these young kids now. A lot of them look at me like, why did you guys listen to that guy? And I was like, well, because he fucking won. And they're like, yeah, but a lot of work. A lot of work in there. And you're like, <laughs> man, you guys no. are fucked up. But these new coaches, they relate to them, and they get these kids to work really, really hard in different ways, right? Maybe it's not sprints every day. Maybe it's not we're going to run 10 gassers every day. Maybe it's mentally. Maybe it's something they have more fun with them, whatever it is. Dude, it's the whole new wave of coaching, and it's super exciting. And at times you're like, would Bill fit in here? I don't know. Uh, I also think that Bill has such a great legacy. Let's not, let's not end on a – like it already ended on a sour note. Let's not make it worse. Well, right, he and wants to catch Don Shula. I just, I don't think Bill wants to. You, you go to a bad football team and you get hired as a head coach. Like no yeah. one, no one inherits. We won like, the Super Bowl. You're fired. Let's get yeah, somebody else. You in know here. what I mean? Like Bill's not going to go somewhere where it's going to be a, a quick turnaround. You're going to the Jets, Bill. I'm sorry. You're, you're going to <laughs> it's the, the only Jets. place that's going to hire you. You're going to a team that wasn't good. I don't think Bill has the endurance for a rebuild. Dude, Belichick to Cleveland back again Ooh, back for round two. Oh, here he we needs, go here he we needs, go he needs 26 wins to tie don shula that's that's, that's like three five years. that's five that's years worth years of coaching minimum for him. no three that's good five. good years yeah. i was gonna say that's, that's gonna take him five years to get there at least with a shitty team like you're talking about a cincinnati I mean, resurgence he's got that, that new girlfriend that might read. That might. That might. This get isn't Houston, bros. You're not drafting C.J. Stroud the first year and just electrically turning it on. I, I'm telling you, I think that Vrabel ends up at the Jets. Ben Johnson ends up in Cleveland. I don't know who ends up in Dallas yet. That's going to be interesting. Simmer. Yeah, <laughs> it'll go really well. All right, Booney, you got time for one more? Or you out? Hit me. Let's go. I okay. Should pick up in five minutes. Okay. Uh, Ryan Denny. Dumb football question. Why don't overpaid quarterbacks take less money to help assemble a winning team? Dak Prescott, for example, if all players want to do is win. Well, that's a fallacy. Players want to win and make life generational changing money. But why not take less money to assemble a better team? Dak is getting paid $60 million to take L's. If he took 40, he could still be very well off financially and could get two other impact players to help the Cowboys. Before Jay takes us on as an agent, I'll take it on as a player. <laughs> As a player, when somebody says, would you like $60 million, you don't look at them and go, no, I'm good. You keep <laughs> half. I'll take the other half. <laughs> like, this is your moment, right? Like, people forget that you played this game to be considered the best. And when you're getting paid money like that, they're telling you you're the best. Like, you have to take that money because you don't know what the hell's going to happen. Nobody knows what the hell's going to happen. At some point, you're going to be like, yeah, I'll take that 60. And then guess what happens next year? Hey, we need you to restructure. We're going to kick this money down the line. Dude, it's, it's the same thing. You guys are reading the wrong narrative. It's just the fact that at points we go, are we really paying this guy $60 million to not do shit? Like, that's where I start to get mad. You can't ever be mad at a player for saying yes to money or trying to get more money. That's the whole name of life. I'm trying to be a best hustler I can be. How do I do that? I can negotiate. I go out. I mean, that's your leverage. You can't tell a player, don't do that. And at the same time, it's like, there's ways to be creative. How? I mean, eventually you have to think you have to find ways to get draft picks that show up for you. They're cheap. That's how you're supposed to get good. Draft good players every year, and you'll be fine no matter where you are in the draft. And for years, there's teams that show you that in the third, fourth, fifth round, you can find great players. Hell, you can find great undrafted players. But you can't ever get mad at a player for saying, ah, it's too much money. That's hold some. Like the Tom Brady – New England, that doesn't happen a lot, where Tom wasn't making the most money as a quarterback, and they were just kind of like, hey, this is how it goes. That was really happening because Belichick was like, this is how shit goes on my team, okay? Nobody makes an insert amount of money. Remember Logan Mangans? I don't know if anybody on this YouTube will remember him. I'm sure somebody listening will remember Logan Mangans. Logan Mangans mm -hmm. was one time like the greatest guard in the history of the league, right? Dude is fucking beast. Savage. Just him and Matt Light, so fun to watch. That was – I talked to Matt Light one time when I was in high school. I was – I'd never been so excited in my life, like full hard on. It, it, when, and when you called his phone, it was the song that would play back, and it was like an old Nelly song, and I was like, no way this is happening right now. And he was like, hey, what's he up? It's Matt backs. Light's phone. Leave a, leave a message. I was like, this guy's so fucking cool. But now we have, hey, it's the but, Rhino. But listen, leave a message. Exactly. What unless happened was, unless you're family. I love you guys so much. I do. Uh, <laughs> but back then, Logan wanted more money. 
And like, it was very like, oh yeah, he's probably deserved. It was like, I think it was $10 million. He was like, I want $10 million. And it was, he's going to be the first guy to break nine. And he was totally worth it. Bill shipped his ass to Tampa. Later, bud. Love you. Don't love you. Ended up fucking ending that shit. Like, that's one of the things where it's like, dude, eventually you have to have, if you're going to really be that team that's like, we're not going to pay you top dollar, you better be really fucking smart. Or you better be really good at motivating. Or you better have a killer defense or something. Because eventually people are like, I want to get paid. And To I me, get it's, what- it's less about like da- ripping Dak for taking it. If if it's a, it's the front office's job. That's if my you point. don't think you can win games with Dak Prescott making sixty, you shouldn't don't pay blame him sixty Dak. million. Do- right, you shouldn't although, pay him. Although I have said on the flip side, if you're like I I said this about Kirk Cousins, bro, you've made two hundred fifty million dollars playing football, and you could take like a little less or do a more team friendly structure to build your legacy on top of the money you've made. And he's been completely inflexible on a lot of that stuff until he but, got to Atlanta. But but we as players don't really look at it like that. Like no. nobody gets mad at anybody ever. I'm never mad at anyone for getting paid. And that's what the fans need to know. Nobody's mad. We're all happy for each other. Dude, we all got paid. We're here. We're having fun. We're doing what we got to do. Yeah, we wish we had another receiver. And I wish this guy probably wasn't making $10 million. But I would never say that to his <laughs> face. I would never openly say that to him or any of my teammates. Yeah, I can't tell you we haven't thought it. Like, man, if this guy maybe just took, like, five less, we could get a real receiver in here. <laughs> but, like, so you, it's not like we're ever going to go to him and be like, dude, you're ripping we need this to, yeah, we need to You think maybe you could just take a little less? Like, you're always like, dude, I'm so happy for you. <laughs> you're making well, it, dude. it all comes down to one word. Loyalty. There is no loyalty to you as a player in the NFL. Right. And so the only way, shape, and form that you can feel respected and feel loyal to from a team is by them paying you. right? And even if they do pay you, they still have no loyalty to you, and they still could ship you off. The only difference is you have them by the balls for the first time. Right. For the first time in the league since you've entered it, you have them by the balls. And now it's like, no, you want to cut me? It's going to hurt. Right? <laughs> it's going to hurt now because you made the decision to pay me because I performed. Right? And it's super easy as a fan to look at it and easy as a player to look and be like, well, if we had this, if we had that. But at the end of the day, you get one, maybe two, if you're lucky, chances to truly ring the cash register in the NFL, right? To truly have life-changing money for not just you, but for your kids and your kids' kids, right? You get one shot at that. It's not your job to tell the organization, I'll take less. It's the organization's job to put the salary cap in there and say, here's what we need to win. Here's how it's going to work. Hey, we need a quarterback. This is what the market is for the quarterback. And if I'm in a quarterback, I'm going, I'm not taking below market value. I am. I right. know what, I, I know what I'm worth. I know what I'm worth. And the second you take below market value, you're screwing the guys behind you, too. Yes. Right? That's the other piece of That's this. a if big you, push. If you, if you as a quarterback, Kirk Cousins, even Kirk Cousins or Dak or Trevor Lawrence or any of these quarterbacks that have gotten paid, if you look at the organization and go, I'll take less, you're setting a benchmark and you're screwing the guys coming up behind you. Right, because the goal is always to keep progressing, make the salary Never cap go higher, low. Never make go more lower. money, make players more money in their pockets. The way to do that is you, you can't, from a, a standpoint of protecting the rest of the guys that you're gonna that are gonna come from behind you and make the money that you're making and make more and keep resetting the market. You can't afford selfishly to screw those guys behind you either. That's just and, another piece of it. And to be fair, eventually they, the ownerships will have to get together and go, we have to knock this quarterback pricing down. It's going to jump to $75 million before you know it. Like Eventually, people are going to have to start getting paid ridiculous amounts, and they're going to be like, all right. Remember, like, was it 09? They restructured the entire thing, and they were like, all right, re-salary caps. We're going to do a rookie wage scale, and then they reset the kind of the market for everybody. They're going to eventually have to do that, or they're going to have to give up more money in the salary cap. Because teams eventually are going to be like, dude, we just can't pay anybody. We can't pay a quarterback and anybody else on the offense. Like, this is going to be too much. Because but it's never going to come from a player saying, I'll take less. Never. Never. Never coming from the PA. Who the fuck would be like, you need to take less, dude. You have fought your ass off to get into this league. And if they tell you that you're worth 60 a year, you hug them, tell them thank you. <laughs> because guess what's happening next year? Listen, we're going to have to take some of this money, kick it down the road. We're going to guarantee it, but it's going to go down the road. Like That's why I said yeah. you don't know what happens after that. You're going to get shipped off to Siberia, and they're going to be like, eat it, motherfucker. You're going to be like, you're gonna, okay, I'll eat it in my $60 million plane, <laughs> right? Sure I thing. think my last thought on this is I think on the quarterback front, it's going to be up to front offices to make decisions on not the fifth best quarterback in the league, like the Josh Allens or whatever when they're up, but it's – 
it's the Dak Cousins, Kirk Cousins line of, okay, they're like the 10th, they're 12th, they're 14th best quarterback, Daniel Jones. You sign him to 40, 50, 60 million dollars. Can you build the rest of your team and win? Or do you just go back in and find someone in the draft and go get, well, make sure Dexter Lawrence gets paid, make sure Malik Neighbors gets paid, all these other guys? That's what you're supposed to do. If you're going to pay your quarterback, you go find weapons around him in the draft. Or if you go into the draft and find a quarterback, then you go pay everybody around him to be mm-hmm. like, make him great. But when you don't do either, either. or, or you miss on both, you're fucked that's for the years, thing. and that's the miss. biggest problem. Well, then right. you're the and Panthers, then, but, right? And then everyone's <laughs> looking at you, going, "Wow, I can't believe this guy's making this much money." And it's like, "Well, that's how it's done. He plays really well. He makes a lot of money." But what happened was in free agency, the teams that have a lot of money normally suck. So they gave him a super fat, rich deal, and guess what? He's eating it right now because he's probably like, "I would take less to not have to take this many pass sets." But that's the name of the game, right? Like you over you overpay in free agency. Everybody knows that because if you don't, the next team will. Look at the Giants. If you don't pay them, your arch rival will come in and be like, "We'll just take you over here with us. Pay you whatever the fuck you want. Why? Because we're smart. We know what we're doing. It it just." It drives me nuts sometimes because the way this business is run, people just don't understand. And you're like, hey, if you're going to pay the dude catching the ball every time on the snap, then everybody around him better be young and inexpensive. Or if the guy back there is young and inexpensive, everything around him better be shiny and bright and very sparkly because it needs to draw eye attention away from it. Like There's always the yin to the yang in this league. And you can see it happening in free agency. You see it happening in the draft. Like You just start putting the pieces together and you're like, oh, I see what they're doing. Or there's sometimes where you go, Dallas, what are you doing? Like what the fuck are we doing over here? It's it's just fighting with local radio hosts is what we're doing. Well, I mean, I'll really. get you fired. I know Terry okay, over Terry. at administration. Take He'll fire you. They do. Well, they, the best was they laughed at him and he goes, "I'm being serious." <laughs> well, well, the other piece of it too is it's it's Mike Tomlin's comment from last night. It's why I'm well compensated. Yeah. If you if it's yeah. it's a hard job to be a GM. It's a hard job to be a head coach. It's a hard job to be a front office person. The cap guy is the unsung hero of every single football team. And if you have a really good one that can make things work, and when you have a well-structured organization, that's where the success comes. When you have dysfunction and you have GM fighting with owner and owner fighting with GM or head coach fighting with GM, and there's dysfunction, that's where there's disagreements. That's where bad decisions are made. And when bad decisions are made, that's when the team can fall apart. But when you all come in an agreement and you all lock arms and say, this is the path moving forward, whether it's pay the guy, don't pay the guy, and everyone can get on board with that, you can make it work. There's ways like there's ways to make it work. It's when you have you make a decision, hey, we're going to pay this guy. And one guy over here was like, I didn't want to pay him. And then he comes up and be like, well, I didn't think this was a good idea. That's where everything will start to fall apart. Yeah. Booney, go pick up kids. All right, Booney. Good luck out there. Dumb football questions. Keep them coming. YouTube comment section. See you guys.